Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to be talking about stepper motors. Mainly it's going to be closed loop stepper motors. But first let me show you an open loop stepper motor. Uh, anybody that has messed with 3D printing or hobby CNC probably knows what this is. This is just your regular old stepper motor. It's open loop. You've got the wires coming off of the coils of the motor and then that's it. Now uh, these motors will work great for 3D printing and hobby, CNC, stuff like that. But the main uh, drawback to these motors is that if they lose a step for any reason, or say you reach the limit of your machine, there's just no way the motor can't com communicate back to your computer or your controller to tell it, hey, there's a problem. Uh, I can't go any further. Or, hey, I tried to move 10 steps, but I only moved five. So uh, that's the main difference, is that these open loop motors cannot communicate back with the controller. Now, this is a closed loop stepper motor here, and I've got a link to this in the description of the video, so check that out. And the main difference is it has this encoder here on the back of the motor, and that's what this extra cable is for. This allows the motor to communicate with the controller so it can tell it that, hey, I can't go any further or, you know, I've, I've missed a step. What should I do? So that's where this comes in. This is the hybrid servo controller. Now, these closed loop motors are also known as hybrid stepper motors. This is a controller, and it's a little bit different from an open loop controller because it will take this signal that comes in off this extra cable and it will, it will process the information. So if the controller says go 10 steps and the motor only goes nine, it knows, hey, this motor needs to go another step and it's gonna tell it, hey, you need to go one more step. Now, if you reach the end of your machine, like you know, you're, you're at the end of your x-axis and you're, the computer's telling it to keep going that direction and it can't, it will only try so long to move steps and it knows that it's missing these steps and it will alarm out and that's what this little extra signal is right here see there's an alarm and then there's also a pending but the alarm will it'll trigger an alarm and when it goes to an alarm state you can set these pins to go high or low and you can hook those up to your uh, cnc software kind of like an emergency stop switch so that if one of these controllers errors out or it alarms out, it'll pause the process until that problem can be fixed. Now, the pending, all that does is when the computer says, tells the controller to move a step, the motor moves a step, and then it communicates back, hey, I moved that step you told me to, that pending will go low or high depending on uh, the state of that uh, communication. So. However this is programmed, you know, if you say move a step, it'll go high. When it moves a step and uh, it's confirmed, then the pin will go low. So that's not really all that useful uh, for CNC applications that I know of, but um, the alarm is very useful. Now, another advantage of these closed loop motors is that they run cooler. And the reason they run cooler is because they... they um, they use less amperage, and that's because the amperage is controlled uh, by these controllers. Now, there's the your usual dip switch settings here for how many uh, pulses per revolution, and that can be set here with the dip switches, just like an open loop controller. But it also controls the amperage. So these motors run a whole lot cooler, and they'll run faster than an open loop motor because uh, anybody that set up uh, one of these controllers for an open loop knows that there's an amperage setting that you have to dial in and once you set it to that setting I mean it just always uses that many amps uh, no matter what so uh, if this motor is just sitting idle it's still if it's energized it's still using those amps and that's why these get a lot hotter than these motors here and another advantage of these controllers is this one will run on AC voltage or DC voltage. So if you've got a switching power supply, um, you can hook it up to this and run this motor, 
or you can just use a transformer and step down your house current uh, as long as it's between 18 and 70 volts AC or 24 and 100 volts DC it's going to power this motor and it's going to it's going to do all of the controlling for you now uh, yes this thing can be pro it can be reprogrammed but out of the box it does a very good job and I've been playing with this uh, one motor quite a bit and I've, seen, I've not found anything that I've needed to go into and reprogram it. Uh, now that, that can be done with a computer. You can reprogram this and you can see here there's this little jack here. It kind of looks like a phone cord and you have to buy a, a separate cable and then that plugs into your computer and you can download the software for this and then you can reprogram it. And uh, some of the things you can reprogram are uh, if the switches on these signals are normally open or normally closed. I think you can do some diagnostics. You can watch uh, certain things as the motor's running, but uh, I can't do that right now because I ordered the cable, but it's gonna be about a month before it gets here, so I, I really don't have any way of hooking this up to my computer to uh, show that to you guys, and I really haven't been able to do anything because I, I can't hook it up to the computer and I ran the software, but it won't do anything if it can't talk to the controller. That's the first thing when it boots up. It'll try to find the controller, and if it can't find the controller, it won't go on any further. So maybe I can do some more, uh, uh, I can show some more of that in a future video. If you guys wanna see that, uh, let me know in the comments. All right, so I've got this thing all hooked up here on the bench, and I'm gonna show you a few things about it. And first thing we need to do is get a temperature reading and we can see it's 71.1 degrees so that's going to be our starting temperature and that's pretty much the room temperature right now so now I'm going to power this on and this power supply will send 33 volts at about 375 milliamps to the controller and the motor now this power supply has a 2 amp limit and I believe the motor and controller have a nine amp peak. So this isn't able to send the amperage that this system is capable of handling. So let me do this. I'm gonna turn it back off and I'm gonna move the vice grips this way and then turn it back on. Now, this is a NEMA 34 motor. This motor is huge. I actually bought way too much of a motor and this is the only way I can do this is to hook something up to the motor uh, that I can get enough leverage to get it to slip. Uh, it's just got so much torque. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've got this all powered up. I'm gonna show you what happens when you, when something forces the motor to move out of the position it should be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down on this and then the controller is gonna know exactly how far this motor turned that it shouldn't have then it's going to tell the motor how many steps to go to go back to the position so that this pair of vice grips is exactly in this same orientation. And I did put a little piece of paper towel, folded it over on here because I don't want to uh, mark up the uh, shaft of this motor with these vice grips. So here we go. I'm going to push it down. And you can see, and then I'm going to let go. So the controller told the motor, hey, you need to go back so many steps. And it'll do it the same way. So if I go this way, and it, this is, it's actually kind of hard to keep it from going, but there we go. So now it tells it, it knows which direction the motor goes, and it tells it to go back. You know, it knows how far to go back to get it to where it needs to be. And another thing, watch the amps on here. This is why I was talking about how the motor controls the amperage of, of, of everything, or the controller controls the amperage. So when I push it down, okay, see it's trying to move back. So it's sending energy to the motor to move it back. You can see the amperage has jumped up to 1.1 amps, but as soon as I let go, it goes back down to that 365 range there. So that's uh, just some of the advantages. That's where having a motor like this with the closed loop where it communicates to controller, it's just so advantageous. Is, uh, it, can, it can tell when it misses a step and it knows what to do to correct it. Okay, so now I have unplugged the encoder 
from the controller so the motor is no longer talking to the controller. Let's power it on and see what happens. We've got the around the 360 milliamps still being drawn, but I'm going to move the vice grips and you can see it's missing steps and nothing's happening. And as it's missing steps, you can see the amperage doesn't change either because the motor and the controller are no longer talking to each other. So that's what happens when the uh, encoder is not connected to the controller. That just shows you how this closed loop system works. We've broken that loop and now it's open. So there's no communication going on. So this is just a regular stepper motor at this point. All right, so now let's try and make this thing alarm out. I still have the encoder disconnected, so it is not making a connection. And I have my multimeter here, and I'm just gonna take a reading here on the alarm pins. And you can see that they are open. And when the terminals touch, it'll beep and it goes to zero. So you can see here, when I hit these, Nothing happens, so that means that the alarm pins are normally open. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power on the controller. And I'm just going to put 5 volts to the pulse pin a couple of times. And you'll see that the motor will try to move the vice grips here. And then it will stop, and then I'm going to keep telling it to move by sending it pulses. And you'll see that the controller will alarm out. So here we go. See now it tried to step and I'm, I'm still telling it to go. There we go. So now it has gone into an alarm phase. You can see this LEDs blinking red. That tells it that, hey, this controller's gone to an alarm mode. And now let's take the reading on the alarm pins. You can see those pins are now closed. So that would be very beneficial if something bad happens between this motor and this controller. It will tell the, the CNC machine to stop so that you're not sitting here moving your, uh, your torch if it's a CNC machine or your router and bumping into things and, and breaking things and to continue to run. It's very uh, advantageous to have that so that it can tell your machine to stop. Now, that's something that you don't get with those uh, normal um, open loop motors. So th there's another advantage of this right here. All right, so here's another way the uh, machine can go into that air state, and that is if it goes too far out of step. So I showed you earlier, if it missed steps, it would go into an air state. So here I'm going to force it. And if you go more than about a quarter of a turn, it's going to go into an air mode uh, just like it did before. So here I'm pushing it. There we go. It just went into error mode. You can see the motor's dead. And we've gone into that error state right there. All right, so let's do our final temperature reading. It has been on for about half an hour. And it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit, so it went up a couple of degrees. So that's not bad. I know that's not a really good test. Uh, I'd want to put it under a load for a while. Uh, that would be a much better test. But I do know that these uh, closed loop motors do run much cooler than the open loops. And I really, you know, this wasn't that good of a test. But, uh, you know, for half an hour at 365 milliamps, uh, I'm sure an open uh, loop motor would be a lot warmer than just a couple of degrees. All right, so I've got kind of a dilemma here. I ordered this motor because I was thinking about upgrading the motors on the... CNC plasma machine to closed loop. Uh, and when I ordered this, I was like, hey, I'll go up to the NEMA 34s, which is what this motor is, and I'll upgrade to a bigger motor. Well, I didn't realize just how big of a motor this was. And uh, let me walk over here to the CNC plasma machine, and I will hold this motor up uh, next to one of the ones that I used before, which is a NEMA 23, and just show you the difference. So yeah, that's a pretty big stepper motor, and uh, I really don't know what I'm going to do with it. That's my problem, is I ordered one of these just so I could play with it and uh, see what all I needed to do 
to upgrade my uh, CNC machine to a closed loop system, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be using this motor. It is just huge and there wouldn't be really any way to upgrade that plasma machine uh, with this motor without having to build new motor plates, put different pulleys on there. Uh, it's just not worth it. Plus the weight. This thing weighs a lot. It probably weighs about as much as four or five uh, NEMA 23 motors. Now this one is a NEMA 34. So that's my dilemma. I've got one stepper motor, but I want to do something with it. I've got an idea of what to do, but I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment and uh, let me know. If you had one big stepper motor, uh, what would you build with it? Uh, I'd be interested to see that. So any idea, no matter how crazy it is, I want to hear about it. Leave that down there in the comments below. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be uh, actually building that crazy project. All right, so I've got a link to these motors and the controllers in the description of the video. So go there and check those out if you're interested in getting yourself some uh, closed loop stepper motors. And if you've had any good or bad experiences with these motors, let us know in the comments of the video. And uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.